In the last chapter, we got everything started for Hacker News. Let's start building the front end. The first piece of functionality that you'll implement in the app is loading and displaying a set of link elements. So let's walk up our way in the React component hierarchy and start with the component that'll render a single link. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a new file called link.js in the components directory and let's add the following code. This is a pretty simple React component that expects a link in its props and renders the link's description and URL. Next, let's implement the component that renders a list of links. Again, in the component directory, go ahead and create a new file called linklist.js. Let's add the following code. In this example, we're adding mock data just to see if our component setup actually works. Soon, we'll replace the actual data loaded from the server. This is a great way to build UI components just to verify that you're not crazy. Use some mock data and get things started. To complete our setup, open up app.js and replace the current contents with the following. Let's run the app just to make sure everything works so far. The app should now display two links from the links to render array. Awesome! So we got the coolest GraphQL backend and with the best GraphQL client. Two things that I agree with. All right, mock data aside, let's actually write the GraphQL query. You'll now load the actual links that are stored on the server. The first thing you need to do for that is define the GraphQL query that you want to send to the API. Here's what it looks like. You can now simply execute this query in a playground and retrieve the results from your GraphQL server. But how could we actually put this in our JavaScript code? Two ways of sending queries to the server. The first one is to use the query method on the Apollo client directly. This is a way, more imperative way of fetching data and will allow you to process the response as a promise. A practical example would look like this. A more idiomatic way when using React, however, is to use Apollo's higher order component, GraphQL, to wrap your React component with a query. With this approach, all you need to do when it comes to data fetching is write the GraphQL query and GraphQL will fetch the data for you under the hood and make it available to your component as props. In general, the process for you to add some data fetching logic will be very similar every time. So let's go through the steps. First, we write the query as a JS constant using the GQL parser function. GQL comes from a node module called GraphQL tag. GraphQL tag takes a string literal and turns it into a GraphQL AST. Second, we use the GraphQL container component to wrap your component with the query. And lastly, we access the query results in the component's props. So let's open up the linklist.js and add the query to the bottom of the file and let's also replace the current link list statement. Alright, let's explain what's going on here. First, we create the JavaScript constant called all links query. This stores the query. The GQL function is used to parse the plain GraphQL code. Next, we define the plain GraphQL query. The name all links query is the operation name and will be used by Apollo to refer to this query in its internals. Notice here we're using a GraphQL comment. Finally, you're using the GraphQL container to combine the link list component with the all links query. We're also passing an option to the function call where you specify a name to be all links query. This is the name of the prop that Apollo injects into the linked list component. If you don't specify a name here, the injected prop would be called data. Relying on data as a prop name is perfectly fine for your apps, but in this case, we just want to be a little bit more specific with what our prop actually is. In this case, all links query will help other developers working on the same project understand what kind of data we're fetching. For this code to work, we also need to import the corresponding dependencies. 
add the following line to the top of the file below the other import statements. We're going to be importing GraphQL and GQL from React Apollo. Awesome! That's all our data fetching code. Can you believe that? You can finally remove all that mock data and render actual links that are fetched from the server. So in linklist.js, let's update our render function. Apollo injected a new prop into the component called all links query. This prop itself has three fields that provide information about the state of the network request. Loading. Loading is true as long as the request is still ongoing and the response has not yet been received. Error. In case the request fails, this field will contain information about what exactly went wrong. And all links. This is the actual data that was received from the server. It's an array of link elements. Sweet. If we run our npm start script again, we should see the exact same screen as before. 